Good day. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Douglas Harder, and in this topic, we're going to look at linear regression and least squares. So in this topic, we will find the best approximation of a target vector as a linear combination of a given set of vectors. We will deduce the normal equations that must be solved in order to find these coefficients, and we will look at two examples. Let's go back to an older problem. Suppose that we would like to find if a linear combination of n linearly independent m-dimensional vectors equals a given target vector y. So, for example, suppose we have these n vectors where n is less than or equal to m. After all, if n was greater than m, these vectors could not be linearly independent. So n must be less than m. Well, what we can do is we can define the matrix V comprised of these vectors as the columns of V, and then attempt to solve the system of linear equations where the target vector is Y. Because the vectors are linearly independent, if a solution exists, it will be unique. After all, if the vectors are linearly independent, the rank of the matrix V will be equal to N. So if a solution exists, it's unique. But what happens if no solution exists? Could we find a best approximation? That is, what linear combination of the vectors v1 through vn best approximates the vector y? Well, recall that if we had a single vector v, then the best approximation of y was the projection of y onto the vector v with the formula shown here. Recall also that if we had an orthonormal collection of vectors v cap 1 through v cap n, then the best approximation of the vector y can be found simply by calculating the inner products of each of these vectors with the vector y, and these then form the coefficients of a linear combination of these vectors. But this only works if the vectors are orthonormal. So apart from these two special cases where we have either one vector or we have a collection of orthonormal vectors, what else could we do? Well, here's an idea. Recall that the projection of y onto the vector v is that scalar multiple of v that is closest to the vector y. Note, therefore, that the error, or the perpendicular component, y minus the projection of y onto v, is therefore perpendicular to v and also every scalar multiple of v. Now, the range of the matrix v is all linear combinations of these n vectors. This forms a subspace in R to the M, that is, the space in which the target vector exists. So can we find the one vector in the range of V that is closest to our target vector Y? That is, can we find a solution vector alpha that contains N coefficients such that V times this solution vector produces a vector in R to the M that is closest to Y. Now, actually, if you're just trying to find that alpha such that V times alpha minus Y is minimized, this is actually very difficult to solve in general even if you do try to minimize the square of that error, 
where this is now an inner product. Instead, consider the following approach. Find that alpha such that v times alpha minus y is perpendicular to the range of v. After all, that's one way of finding the result when we got to finding the projection. This may also sound familiar because we discussed this a few topics back. So let's review those topics as we reintroduce this material. Now, V is a linear operator that maps Fn to Fm where n is less than or equal to m. And of course, if n equals m, there must be a unique solution as we assumed that the columns of V are, were linearly independent. So for this problem to exist, n must be less than m. All right, so for V times this vector alpha in the domain minus the vector y in the range to be perpendicular to every point in the range of the matrix V, we require that V times U interproducted with this V times alpha minus Y, that must be zero for every vector U in the domain because the range is defined as the image of all vectors in the domain under the mapping V. Well, recall that we can bring the linear operator V to the right-hand side by using the adjoint. All right, so now we have that the vector U is perpendicular to the adjoint of V multiplied by V times alpha minus Y for all vectors U in the domain. So this expression here is perpendicular to U for every U in F to the N. But wait a second, there's only one vector that is perpendicular to all vectors in that vector space. And that is, of course, the zero vector. So the only way that the adjoint of V times V alpha minus V is perpendicular to every U in F to the N is for that vector to be equal to the zero vector. Thus, if V is a linear map from Fn to Fm, and this inner product is zero for all vectors U in the domain, then the only possibility is that this vector here is equal to the zero vector. Okay, expanding that expression, we have that the adjoint of V times V times our unknown vector alpha minus the adjoint of V times Y, that's equal to the zero vector. Well, we can bring the neg negated component to the other side to get this expression here. And these are called the normal equations. Why are they called the normal equations? Well, you may recall that the adjoint of V times V is normal. All right, so because the vectors in V were linearly independent, it follows that the rank of the adjoint of V times V is equal to the rank of V, which is equal to N. So a solution is guaranteed to exist. That's nice. Also, 
This solution is called the least squares solution because it minimizes the two norm and the two norm of a vector is the sum of the squares of the entries of that vector. So this is the solution that minimizes that sum of squares. All right, for example, given these two vectors, what linear combination of these two vectors best approximates this target vector? Now, as you can see, um, there likely is no solution because after all, the span of those two vectors is a two-dimensional subspace of R4. So it's essentially a plane in R4. And what is the probability that that vector Y will be on that plane? On the other hand, there should be a, a point on that plane that is closest to the vector Y. But we're rushing ahead. Instead, let us try to solve the system of linear equations. And in doing so, we find that the augmented matrix has rank three, while the matrix itself has rank two. Therefore, yes, we're correct. No solution exists. Now, if we create the matrix V, which has V1 and V2 as its two columns, we must then solve V transpose times V times alpha equals V transpose times Y, where Y is equal to this given target vector. So we are solving for alpha. Now, V transpose times V, after all, the adjoint of a real matrix is the transpose, is simply the matrix 20, 10, 10, 12. And you can calculate that yourself if you wish. Also, if we calculate V transpose times Y, we get the vector negative 6, 18. So far, so good, because V transpose times V is a 2 by 2 matrix. The new target vector V transpose times Y is negative 6, 18. Again, another two dimensional vector. And we are solving for the vector alpha, which is two coefficients, one for V1 and one for V2. So yes, also two dimensional. Now notice that we can write down the augmented matrix, perform Gaussian elimination, and use backwards substitution to determine that alpha two is equal to three and substituting that back into the first equation, you get that alpha one is equal to negative 36 over 20, which is equal to negative 1.8 over three. Thus, the best approximation of the target vector y using these two vectors is negative 1.8 times the first plus three times the second, which is equal to this vector, negative 7.2, negative 2.4, 1.2, Now, it's not a very good approximation. Negative 7.2 and negative eight, they're reasonably close. The next two have almost opposite signs. The next two also have opposite signs, but again, 2.4 is closer to six. So it's not as if these are good vectors to approximate this particular vector with. However, so while this isn't close, any other linear combination of those two vectors must be further away from the target vector. And you're welcome to try that out. So suppose you are periodically reading a sensor and it is returning a scalar of some significance, be it a temperature, position, concentration. Question, what 
line AT plus B best fits this data for, then you know the best estimator of the current rate of change, and that would be the coefficient A. So is it that line? Or is it that line? Or is it that line? So which is the best estimator of a line passing through this data? So consider these five points. The first value is a time value. The second value is something that is being measured at that moment in time. Now, as you can see, the points are close to being in a straight line, but they're not perfectly straight. So the question is, what is the best fitting line that passes through these five points? Well, we have these five pairs of T values and Y values. We want to find the best line of the form Y is equal to AT plus B. Well, what we can do is for each point, substitute in the value of t and substitute the value of y into that equation. That will, that will give us five equations in two unknowns. So there are five equations in the two unknowns a and b. That looks like a target vector. And if you take a look at the left-hand side, that should actually start to become reasonably familiar. Isn't that simply a times the vector 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 plus b times the constant vector of all ones? Is it not our goal, therefore, to find the best approximation as a linear combination of those two vectors to equal that target vector y? Well, I think it is. Therefore, we must define the matrix V comprised of those two vectors as the columns and the target vector Y. Next, we perform the following calculations. We calculate V transpose times V, and that gives us the, the two by two matrix 30, 10, 10, 5. It's symmetric and therefore normal. We, def we calculate V transpose times Y, giving us the vector 48.7, 23.5. Therefore, we have to solve this particular system of linear equations for the unknown vector alpha. It is, of course, two dimensional we find that alpha is equal to 0 0.17 and 4.36. Now, if you return back to the original material, the first coefficient was associated with A and the second coefficient was associated with B. Thus, the best fitting line is of the form 0 0.17 T plus 4.36. Thus, looking at our result, we see both the points and the best fitting line that most closely approximates those five points as a line of the form y is equal to at plus b. Now, once again, suppose that you got this data here from periodically sampling a sensor and it's returning some values you need to interpret. At this point, it should become clear that there isn't constant motion going on here, but rather there's acceleration. So question, what is the curve A times T squared plus B times T plus C that best fits this data? For then you know the best estimator of the current acceleration and you can also calculate the best the rate of change at any one specific time. So the question is, is it that, that, or that quadratic? 
which is the best fitting one. So consider the following data. It doesn't look like a straight line. It looks like there's acceleration going on. So rates of change of the rates of change. And therefore we'd like to find the best fitting quadratic. Thus, given these pairs of T values and Y values, our goal is to find the best fitting quadratic of the form Y is equal to AT squared plus BT plus C. Thus, we now will have five equations in five unknowns. So for example, the third equation, which is 4A plus 2B plus C is equal to 1.9, we got that by substituting the value t equals 2 into the right-hand side of the quadratic. So that would give us a times 2 squared plus b times 2 plus c, which gives us the left-hand side 4a plus 2b plus c. The y value is 1.9, and that becomes the right-hand side of the linear equation. We can do the rest we can do the same for the rest. And of course, if the points are not so nicely separated, you're just going to get more different values. All right, already we can see the target vector. And if you're looking at the left-hand side, you should say to yourself, oh, wait a second, that again looks familiar. It looks like we are trying to find a linear combination of three vectors that equals a given target vector. All right, so consequently we must define the matrix V and the target vector Y. Next we start to calculate. We calculate V transpose times V and now it is a Three by, uh, v is a 5 by 3 matrix, therefore we're multiplying on the left by a 3 by 5 matrix, and the result will be a 3 by 3 matrix. Similarly, we will multiply y on the left by v transpose, and that reduces it from a 5-dimensional vector into a 3-dimensional vector. Thus, we have to solve the following system of linear equations as given by that matrix. Now, fortunately, there is a unique solution because the four col three column vectors are linearly independent. So the solution is this vector here. All right, so the first one is with respect to A, then B, then C. So the best fitting line is of the form y is equal to 0 0.26249 t squared minus 1.12714 t plus 3.08857, approximately. Thus, we can take a look at the points and observe that this best fitting quadratic seems to be quite close. So now we actually have a coefficient that gives us an approximation of the rate of change of whatever source this is coming from. So following this topic, you understand the idea of finding a best fitting linear combination of given vectors that equals a target vector. You know that this results in a set of equations called the normal equations. And these are found in order to get the point in the range of the operator V to get that point that is as close as possible to the target solution. You understand that the column if the column vectors are linearly independent, then the rank of V, the adjoint of V times V, is equal to the size of that square matrix, and therefore there must be a unique solution.
you looked at two applications of this technique to find a best fitting line and a best fitting quadratic through given data. Here are the references, acknowledgements, the colophon, and a disclaimer. Cheers!